Welcome, friends, to the Bride of Christ and uh, Hebrew Nation podcast, radio, etc. Um, we've been covering different topics uh, for the covenant that we need to make uh, to become Christ's uh, Messiah's kingdom and bride. But uh, so many things have been happening lately that I'm going to do sort of an update, uh, and I believe that it will be of interest to most people that are listening now. Let's ask Messiah's uh, blessing. Heavenly Father, please uh, help us uh, with your spirit to see and understand from Scripture what you intended spiritually, just even as uh, the unleavened bread uh, was really not about crackers. It's really about your word that's been leavened by preachers and Pharisees in that time. So please help us understand it, and thank you for your promises to be with us and help us as we try to share it for Messiah's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, a Messianic rabbi shared with me this insight that I value highly because uh, what's about to happen will shake a lot of Christians and a lot of Jews, I think. Because uh, 98% of, of Christians and Jews probably believe that God did a miracle to uh, provide Israel and bring them back to their land. And I'm not seeing it that way because I happen to have done the math and God said to Israel, if you walk contrary to me, I'll punish you seven times over. And the point is that the Jews have had a historic problem counting seven. <laughs> they counted seventh day to the Sabbath, but they didn't count the seventh year, okay, to rest the land. And God let them go to uh, Babylon for uh, 70 years, okay, until uh, Cyrus let them go back. And uh, again, uh, they didn't count the 77s of Daniel 9 to Messiah. Uh, they probably would have if he'd have been like a king to conquer the Romans and uh, let them have all the power. But he wanted, first of all, the kingdom within them. And uh, that involved his spirit. And uh, blessed are the meek, the merciful, the humble, the teachable, uh, forgiving, and so on. Uh, that's not what the Jews wanted. They wanted to fight it and beat it, okay? So uh, uh, <laughs> that, that was, God didn't honor that, uh, and, but, and that's what the disciples wanted when they were going up the hill the last time in Acts 1-6. They said, are you going to restore the kingdom at this time? And uh, Christ replied, uh, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. But Paul says, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write, for you know perfectly. Okay, so uh, I believe we should know perfectly, but we don't. But let me explain it, uh, basically. Uh, the next fr uh, phrase, uh, everything fits Egypt, by the way. Uh, for the day of the Lord, which was an extension of night of the Lord in Egypt. The night of the Lord was a time when God said, I will execute judgment in Exodus 12, 12. And in verse 42, he called it the night of the Lord. Well, that's only once in the Bible. Day of the Lord is 25 times, and I think it's going to be 25 times bigger with a time of judgment impending. And guess what? I think America is going to get it first. There are a lot of patriotic people that think they can somehow take this land back for God. But uh, God told Israel in Jerusalem, if you fight, you'll die. Go out and fall to the Chaldeans. Surrender, okay? and you will live. And the point is that uh, this is not about uh, getting guns. Uh, uh, we might have even AK-47s, but they have tanks, okay? It's gonna be bad, and those who fight will die, in my opinion, uh, based on scripture as a, and a repeat of history. Because in Ecclesiastes 3.15, in the New English Bible, it says, what is has been already, what is to come has been already. God summons each event back in its turn. So God is going to repeat history, and uh, it's going to be like Egypt coming out of uh, Israel coming out of Egypt to Sinai for a covenant that made them His kingdom in Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6, and bride in Jeremiah 3:14. He said, "Return, I'm married to you." Well, God got an ignorant bride that worshipped a calf 40 days later, and it must not happen to our Savior Yeshua, the Hamashiach, and so. Uh, uh, I believe the wedding parables have embedded in them the imagery that we can put together if we synthesize those parables to see that it's not a quick snatch to heaven as half of uh, Christians think they're going to be out of here to heaven. Why would God want to rapture a group that's described as wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked to heaven? 
we would start trouble all over again. But the uh, opportunity that we will have to go to the land of, of the covenant uh, has the context that he's going to write his law in our hearts. So we'll want to do the right thing. And then we can be ready for Messiah's return in the sky when we see him at the end of seven years. It's not about a quick snatch now. Uh, we, some preachers say, oh, God wouldn't put his bride through that. Well, yes, he would. He did it with Israel. He's wanted to prove what was in their heart, and it wasn't good. And we have to say, uh, will you keep my covenant? Uh, we want to be, actually, God was proactive with Israel. And with Abraham, when Abraham and God were making a covenant, God, as a burning lamp, went between the pieces of the sacrifice. And he wants us this time, he wants us to have the lamp burning. We must be proactive like God was then, okay? That will prove that we really want it. It's not just, oh, passively agree. Yeah, we'll do whatever you say, God. We have to know what he wants and offer it to him in a prenuptial wedding feast of betrothal, okay? And that's, uh, that's how I see it based on uh, the fact that the biblical uh, weddings were a week and, wedding, and um, uh, covenants were linked to sevens. And there are seven topics that have a sevenfold emphasis as a mark of end time truth, just like Revelation has seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, etc. Well, those seven seals are contextually linked to these topics that we need to have and know. Okay, I'll give you an example or two. I have done it before. But the first, uh, uh, Revelation 6, 1, John hears thunder. Thunder is linked to God's name. In John 12th chapter, verse 28 and 9, Christ, Messiah, Yeshua said, Father, glorify your name. And the people standing around said it thundered. And in Revelation 14, 1, the 144,000 have the Father's name in their forehead. And in the next verse, there's thunderings. So, the problem is we, we, uh, we don't know God's name. I know there are millions of Jews that think it's Yahweh, but it's not Yahweh, okay, or Yahuwah, etc. In my opinion, I'm going to share why. Because Josephus, a Jewish historian at the time of Jerusalem's destruction, he was a contemporary with apostles, he was describing the temple furniture as they brought it out after the temple burned, and the, go the high priest's golden crown in which was engraven the sacred name, this is a quote, it consists of four vowels, not Y-H-W-H, -H, okay? Vowels are the music and melody of a word. They are the beautiful part when you hear a beautiful song, okay? It's not ba ka ma ba fa We would be very limited if we only had consonants. God lends us his name so we can even talk intelligently. I know that the four vowels don't sound quite right, it's, but you wouldn't want a God that uh, has a name like Tom, Dick, or Harry. You know, it has to be different, and vowels are different. <laughs> and Solomon said it's a great name, okay? And his temple was dedicated to the purpose that all nations, would, all people would know thy name. But today, I don't think there's 1% of Christians or Jews who really know it. But uh, a, a big clue is uh, the word hallelujah, okay? Because a hallel means praise to ia ua, okay? That's the tetragrammaton. Yod has the uh, e sound. The he has the a sound. The vav has the u sound, ia ua, okay? Um, and the short form of that in Psalm 68, verse 4, praise him that rides on the heavens or extol him by his name, Jah. There's no J in Hebrew. It was Ia, okay? And the countries like Samaria wanted to be godly people, Maria, etc., uh, godly people. The prophets came in God's name, Zechariah, Obadiah, Zephaniah, okay? Uh, we say Aya, but that's uh, the, the international uh, I has the E sound, and that's the Yod, the smallest letter. So uh, that's, that's just one example of the fact that uh, surprise, and we're in for a lot of surprises in the end time coming. But the topics that have been leavened, most people don't get it. Uh, there are a few um, 
churches that call themselves the New Covenant uh, Baptist or Methodist or whatever, but uh, I, the fact is that right now nobody has that yet. <laughs> they don't. They don't have it written in their heart. Let's put it that way, because that's the context of our going to the land of the covenant. Uh, both in Jeremiah 31, uh, it says in verse 8, He will uh, bring us from the north country, gather us from the coast, the lame, the blind, the woman, the child. A great company is going to return there. He that scattered Israel will gather him, keep him as a shepherd does his flock. Your children will come again from the land of the enemy. They'll come again to their own border, verses 16 and 17. And in verse 31, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, okay? And write my laws in their heart, verse 33. We have to have that or we're not ready for heaven. We would start trouble all over again, okay? And so, and it's a uh, mouth of two or three witnesses, um, uh, by the way, Isaiah 11:11 11, 11 says it's going to happen a second time, but I like Ezekiel 36. That's easy to remember. Three dozen chapters, two dozen verses, verse 24, when it says, I'll take you from among the heathen. We're living among heathen today, okay? And uh, bring you into your own land, sprinkle clean water, and you'll be clean. Put my spirit in you, cause you to walk in my statutes and judgments, and you'll dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, and I will be your God. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I, I don't yet know how we're going to get there. Uh, we have to take some things by faith. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But uh, it's a provision that he made seeing the end from the beginning. Um, in the book of beginnings, after the flood, uh, he scattered them among the nations. But somehow they didn't believe God's promise not to destroy the world with a flood again. So they built the Tower of Babel. Well, he confused the tongues and scattered them again, okay? And uh, he, he wants us to trust him. But the EU, European Union, takes that uh, Tower of Babel as their symbol or icon for European Union. And they say, well, out of many nations, one tongue. Well, <laughs> not exactly. And it's ultimately going to prove confusion. But God is going to have a group of people in the land of the covenant and he's going to defend that. He's staked a claim on that land. And that's why he's going to divide the, send the Jews out now. Okay, The Jews are about to be taken out of Israel. We think Israel was a, an answer to prayer or somebody. But the Jews there, a Messianic rabbi said 90% have no interest in their land, uh, that land, or God. I'm sorry, they, they're interested in the land, free land, but they're not interested in God or their heritage. That's what I meant to say because um, uh, they're just there for the, the land itself. And uh, God is going to, uh, and, and the point is, I said that they, weren't, they didn't count the sevens because God said, if you, if you walk contrary, you punish, uh, I'll punish you seven times over. And we see they didn't count the 70 sevens to Messiah in the 69th week of years. So their temple was destroyed in the next verse. That's Daniel 9, verse 24. 25 mentions Messiah from a decree to restore and build Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is about to be destroyed. We're going to have that decree again so we can start counting again for when we can go. Okay, But uh, uh, the temple was destroyed in verse 26 by the, the people of the prince that shall come, which was Rome. Okay, And uh, Rome has got a bad reputation in Scripture, it seems like, <laughs> because uh, we see it in Revelation 17 as Babylon. Uh, riding uh, a harlot, riding a beast of new world order. Won't go there right now, but anyway, let's just uh, hang with what we're talking about. So if you realize that God was going to punish them, and in Ezekiel 4, verse 4 and 5, God asked Ezekiel to lie on his side 390 days. Each day for a year, Israel was in apostasy. Well, that's giving you the message. 390 years, Israel was in apostasy, and times 7 is 2730 years okay that's a long time and israel was not free to return in 1948 if you do the math from 722 bc when sennacherib came and took them into exile 20, 722 from 2730 is 2008 but no year zero when messiah was born so it's 2009 and in that year Pope Benedict shows up as a sign not to come back. The early Christians understood that. 
that Rome was the abomination of which Christ was speaking. And when the Rome came in 66 AD under Cestius, Christians fled the city, they got out of there, and not a single Christian lost his life when Jews starved to death, mothers ate their own babies, etc. Bad situation, and famine is coming again in our time and not far away because the prophecy that Christ spoke of Smite the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered, comes from Zechariah 13th chapter. And in the last chapter, next, next chapter, 14, the day of the Lord comes. And nations are going to be gathered against Israel to battle. Houses rifled, women ravished, half the city goes into captivity. Not a good situation. And Hamas did that already in micro, uh, only 1,200 people in Israel that have it at a music festival. But it's going to replay big when Jerusalem falls. And they, the, uh, the prophecy is uh, the, that uh, they will be gathered and be taken. Okay, So it's, it's not a matter of if, but when. And I'm kind of thinking that just as Titus came at Passover, time of judgment for Jews, that it may happen a couple weeks from now. Next week, later. Okay, Let's wait and see. I could be wrong. It might not happen uh, right away but may wait uh, until uh, mid-May. Why, Why mid-May? <laughs> the day of the Lord is said to be a day of darkness in Joel 2, verse 1 and 2. And if you Google dark day, Google tells you it's May 19, 1780. Unexplainably dark. Cows came in from the field. Chickens went to roost. People used laps at midday. It wasn't an eclipse that just passed away in a few minutes, and it wasn't smoke on the western um, front, you know, and so on. The people would have smelled smoke. But New Englanders thought it was a sign of Christ's coming from Joel 2, verse uh, 31. Sun will be darkened. Moon turned to blood. It did happen, okay. But God repeated that 200 years on the anniversary date, May 19, 1980, when Mount St. Helens erupted. And put ash into the sky, and overnight, the wind carried that ash over three northwestern states, just like the first uh, dark day was in the northeast in New England. I think that is too big of a coincidence. It's not just an odd coincidence. God was in that, okay? He did it, and he was marking the papal calendar of May 19, May 19, 1780, May 19, 1980, and this year, May 19, coinciding with what's happening with Jerusalem and the Hamas and the Iran, uh, May 19 happens to be as the days of Noah, the day that Noah entered the ark. And I'm believing it will be a dark day on May 19 somehow. I don't know yet how. I'm kind of believing it could be a EMP attack that knocks out our power glid won't have internet, uh, won't have lights maybe, can't cook. I don't know, really. But I heard Jonathan Hollerman of the Homeland Security Deputy Director saying he is amazed that we haven't had a, an EMP attack so far. He said it would be so easy, just a, a high-altitude nuclear explosion mid-America, over Kansas City or somewhere, doesn't matter, don't have to be specific, would be, it would be easy to do. We even had a balloon recently. Uh, they, they wondered what the balloon is about. Uh, who knows? But the point is that uh, an EMP attack would knock out our power grid coast to coast, could. And it, those uh, transformers are made specifically for each location. It takes a year to remake them and build them up. Might take longer than that under the handicaps. But uh, the point is that during that year, about 90% of people in cities will die. Starvation. We said that mothers ate their own babies in Jerusalem's destruction. Uh, we're not far from famine now. Okay, that's the, the actually the black horse. Uh, uh, the the uh, a measure of wheat for a penny, two measures of bar, three measures of barley for a penny. Uh, that's rationing of food. Okay, so hang on uh, and let's uh, let's prepare ourselves to be in the country where uh, if you help some farmer to do his garden, he'll maybe give you some food to eat with too. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, man's original lesson book was the garden, and we've been, uh, but after sin, you're in the sweat of your brow, you'll earn bread, and we've been trying to avoid sweat ever since, okay? <laughs> Not good. Sweat avoids certain, uh, gets rid of certain poisons as well. 
So um, coming down to the end, and I hear a, a little uh, warning that I'm going to run out of town in, uh, time in about three or four minutes. So um, we need to study the covenant and see how we can have these unleavened topics. I have, um, I don't have it here with me right now. Hold on. Yeah, a book on the fall of Jerusalem. That's really what's the next event that I think will happen next week. Go to my website, healthhappinessdestiny.com and get that book, uh, read it, and, be, uh, and you will, in that book, probably learn that you, there's an earthquake coming because when Muslims take the city and they celebrate their mosque and the Quran, which says Allah has no son, the sun is going to, uh, it, by the way, the sun that, uh, is really the Lion of Judah in Revelation 5.5. 5. And verses, uh, it says in Joel 3.16 that the Lord will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake. That's one big earthquake. Uh, I believe it's bigger than we think. In fact, uh, Isaiah 2.12, day of the Lord context again, verse 21 says that he will shake the earth terribly. Okay, that's, um, uh, that's fear God, give glory to him as the first angel's message. Time of judgment. In, in Greek, it's crisis spelled with a K, K-R-I-S-I-S. -I -S. The whole world will be in a crisis after that earthquake and things will be going down and uh, for those rich people who think they're uh, okay, guess what? They're going to throw their gold and their silver to the bats, okay? It won't save them. And uh, in the fall, Feast of Trumpets, when all the green grass burns up, it's not about grass or we'd be dead. It's about spiritual grass. As the flower of the grass, so shall the rich man fade. They won't, they won't be dead. They just will be rich, okay? The, the, there's, God's going to have his own reset. It's not about what they're going to do to make us poor and them rich. Uh, they're going to be out in the cold and dark as well. Okay, as, uh, the, le the ground is going to be level at the end time, foot of the cross, I believe. So think about that and get a better understanding with the fall of Jerusalem. And really, uh, uh, another verse, uh, uh, the, the three words everybody wants, healthhappinessdestiny.com is my website. And for you know less than $10, you can get these books when uh, you'd probably pay that much for a meal or if, uh, going out at least more than that if you take your wife <laughs> or spouse um, it, it, but uh, it's it's high value a meal for the mind okay and uh, the real book that I want to encourage you to get that we really need is the earthquake and seven seals the seven seals are what we need for the covenant and I hear the music playing now so uh, this is a hallelujah chorus. It's praise to Iaua. Hallelujah. Ha Thank you for being with us. Come again next week. Tell your friends. Go to the website. Write me a, uh, an email. If uh, My email is in the, the books. And by the way, the book has high value link that you can get uh, to reverse most disease without prescription drugs. So uh, hallelujah. Thank you again. We'll see you again next week, and we'll deal more with these topics. Bye-bye.